I'm Patrick M. Politico. I'm joined by Emily Miller with the Washington Times, an author of Emily Gets Her Gun, But Obama Wants to Take Yours. Um, before we get into the, uh, the actual substance of this book, there's, I mean, timing worked out kind of nicely in a weird way for you in the sense that you've been kind of on this issue of gun control for a while, and then now all of a sudden gun control is back in the new, I mean, unfortunately, obviously. Yeah. Um, but talk a little bit about the genesis of this book and your own personal story that helped you make you want to write it. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I decided to get a gun a couple years ago after being a victim of a crime, of a home invasion. Yeah. And I, you know, I never shot a gun before in my life, and, but I just, you know, I was, I came home and I was dog sitting for friends and I walked in the house and there was this thug thief in the house. Um, and like 15 of his buddies were outside in the driveway. Mm. So it really terrified me and that night I went to bed and I thought, you know, I'm, I, what if I just had a gun, like what else am I gonna do if they come right. back? And that motivated me to get a gun in DC and I went through and it's a long story of how I got a gun. That was a series I wrote, but it took four months, it took 17 steps, it was so extreme. And then quite soon after that, we had Aurora, mm -hmm. unfortunately, that's terrible tragedy in Newtown right after that. And Obama won a second term. So he has pushed gun control on the national scale. And in all these states have passed gun control law. And that's really what motivated me to write the book because I had just gone through all this process of getting a gun myself and saw it only affects the law abiding. Because gun control doesn't reduce crime. It only affects the people like and me. What, and, and the kind of guns that you wanted to get that you still found it difficult to get were what? Well, I got the gun, it's on the cover of my book, right. I got a SIG. Right, so it's not like some Uzi or... Right, well, you can't get... The, I don't know a ton about right. guns, but it's not like some insane military-style rifle. Style rifle. Yeah. I would have, if I could have. Really? Yeah, sure, why not? Why not? Well, especially because you can't, you know, and that's what... This, you also that's had 15 why. people in your driveway. That takes a little bit more than... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, might, you might need an automatic I mean, I'm a pretty good shot now. Right. I do train, but um, yeah, you do. You might need a little bit long range, but no. I am, I'm happy with the gun that I got because, you know, I live in an apartment, so it's going to be close range. But D.C. does have an assault weapons ban. And one of the things I liked, it did in my book is to explain when, uh, how the assault weapons ban bill worked through the, the Hill, the Senate this year, yeah. um, and how it passed in so many four states this year. But what does that mean for, what does that really mean? Because people hear it and they think assault weapons ban, Uzi, or mm -hmm. well, these crazy guns. Well, it means something, it's ridiculous. It's a rifle that has cosmetic things on it. Right. So it has a pistol grip, it has a collapsing stock, which lets you fit better, um, a bayonet lug, because mm -hmm. so many criminals are running around right. stabbing people with yeah. rifles. I mean, it's just sort of these things that are just sort of to scare the public. Um, and so when I wanted to register a gun, I had to go through this list, DC has a list, of, to base, so because of their assault weapons ban mm -hmm. approval. And for example, this is one sample of it, my exact gun in the camouflage colors is illegal in DC. It's just, just too scary. Just because of the color. So is, is DC uniquely difficult for somebody like yourself who wants to buy a gun, or is it, or in sort of researching this book, you realize that this is kind of par for the course? This is standard in a lot of states that are anti-gun and have these gun control laws. And so, and we've had five new states this year pass laws like this, New York, Maryland, mm -hmm. New Jersey, Colorado, and, and Connecticut. And uh, the, the biggest point I try to get off, get through to people in this book is that there has never been any gun control law that has been proven to reduce crime. Never. The CDC did a two-year study on this, the government studies, Justice Department has never claimed that, Harvard did a major study on this, and so we're passing gun control laws ostensibly to reduce violence, or that's what the White mm -hmm. House says, mm -hmm. and that's what the this part of the, den the Senate who wants these laws to pass but no one has ever proven that they reduce crime. And quite the opposite, gun ownership has just gone through the roof in the past 30 years, and especially in the past couple of years, as Obama's been talking wow. about gun bans, it's just through the roof. So gun ownership is the highest rates ever. There's 300 million guns in this country, yet gun crime goes down every single year and has since 1991. So is there anything in the wake of those shootings, there been a lot of things that were talked about, background checks, uh, mental health, uh, reducing size of your gun clips, uh, reducing assault weapons. Uh, there's probably a couple more I'm missing. Any of those options that were talked about, were any, uh, would any of those you would support that you think would actually help reduce crime? Or you think they're all well, there, kind of waste There's of things that are, have been proven to reduce crime. I mean, none assault weapons ban, high capacity magazine ban, these are all the things that were studied by the CDC, um, universal 
background checks studied by the CDC proven not to reduce crime. So we know what doesn't work. We do know what can work, and one of those is the FBI checks, which is called NICS, um, background checks. When effective, they will stop the prohibited people from getting guns, and those are the felons, drug addicts, wife abusers. So those have to work, and for order for those to work, mental health records have to be in the system. And so mental health is sort of the key, key component to Mental it. health treatment for that and for getting the records into the system, because the way the Obama administration wants to expand this so that, and this is what's going on in Colorado and a lot of these states, they want to expand it so that you have background checks for private exchanges, but the records aren't in the system, so they're not going to catch guys anyway. Of course, bigger picture, the bad guys aren't going to stop exchanging guns right. because that's not how criminals get guns. They steal them. Well, I wonder too, I mean, and again, I'm not a gun owner, I'm not a gun expert, um, but I, you know, I sort of think, so I mean, this whole book is sort of how difficult it was for you to get a gun. There's part of me that's like, I think it should be hard to get a gun. Um, tell me why I'm wrong. But also, and then on the issue of background checks too, I mean, part of me thinks, uh, okay, you're probably right that it won't stop crime universally, but like, what's the harm in it? So those are probably arguments that I'm sure you hear a lot. Uh, why are those like? Like, why am I wrong to sort of say, well, it should, you know, it should be a little difficult to get a gun. You shouldn't be like getting a like a pack of cigarettes or whatever. Well, as I explained in the book, and what is why I really wanted to write this book is because there is a lot of misconceptions about gun control yeah. and gun and violence. And only 12 percent. Pew did a study, a survey in May. Only 12 percent of the public knows that gun crime is down. Only 12 percent. Most people think gun crime is up which is just an amazing number. And, and it's because of a lot of this coverage of these rare mass shootings, and Congressional Research Service did a look at all the mass shootings in 10 years. They're not up, they're not down. They concluded there's no way to avoid them. They're crazy, evil people. So we focus on those, but yet the 11,000 people who are killed every year are killed mostly in the cities. Violence is caused by a wide variety of things, lack of education, the culture, the weather, the density of the population. Those are things that create violence, whether it's gun violence or any violence. Um, and the, so the purpose of my book is to just sort of have people understand the facts of this stuff. Before, before any more states start passing laws. Because there has been a lot of confusion just in the in the media alone. I mean, yeah. I think a lot of, I mean, I, if, if, you were, if you were to put me on the nightly news talking about ammo clips, I wouldn't know what I was talking about And either. there's no such thing as a clip, and that's one right, of the things right, I do. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, is there, um, I mean, you were talking about that mental health, mental health would be the one thing you'd really nail down. Uh, and prosecutions would be the other solution. Right. Because we have thousands of gun laws on the books, thousands. And um, to answer your question earlier. They're not enforced. And yeah. prosecutions are down 10% in this administration of gun crime. And the president and the vice president have said, and I interviewed Jim Baker, who was the federal lobbyist who was in the one White House meeting that the NRA was invited mm -hmm. to. And Baker said, he said to the vice president, with all due respect, sir, you need to prosecute these NICs are the background checks you get right. when you buy a gun. I got, everybody gets. You need to prosecute the ones who are denied. That's how you catch these guys. And you create a deterrent. And the vice president said to him, and I read, put this in the book, the vice president said to him, well, we don't really have time for these paperwork crimes. And it, it, what's so shocking is it's a complete lack of understanding. That is the crime. It's the perjury on the document that the feds have to go after and ATF has to go after and then we have to prosecute. Because otherwise, sort of like what you said earlier about going to background check, if you're a felon and you're like, well, there's a chance I'll get through, you'll just go to the store and buy it mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. So we have to prosecute. And then once word spreads on the sh street, and this is what Richmond did in this great program they had uh, called Project Exile, they started creating this dissentive for, for criminals to get guns illegally, and prosecutions went up. Murder fell, I think, half in six months. It was like a dramatic change. What, what's the line for you in terms of, uh, and I could be wrong, like, is there a set of guns that you think, yes, people should not be able to buy those, or that we should take off the market? I, the laws that are on book ground. Since 1934, there are no, I don't think there are any law, but legal guns now that should be taken off. Because another you know, thing people need to understand is every gun that is legal right now is semi-automatic, no mm -hmm. matter what. That means you pull the trigger once, one round right. comes out. All fully automatic guns have been banned, or not banned, but highly regulated since 1934. They're not used in crimes. So all these guns, whether it's my handgun or a rifle or an AR-15 or an AK-47 or they're all semi-automatic. Then there's, of course, shotguns and revolvers. Mm -hmm. So all these guns function the same. So when people talk about high-powered rifles, high-powered, they're, they're just rifles. There's a 
there is, and even, I'll tell you, you know, Diane Feinstein herself, who obviously is pushing the assault weapons ban, mm -hmm. she herself says that about the average of number of people killed by assault weapons rifles, which law enforcement doesn't track because they don't track the style of a rifle, it's just rifle. She puts it at 35 a year. I mean, it's not an epidemic. Right. You know, it's... It, they look scary, and, and you know, it's been part of the anti-gun movement for years, and the original memos in my book of how they came up with this term, assault weapon, sort of scare people, because they said people will think it's an automatic gun. And President Obama, several times in the past six months, has given speeches in the states promoting these laws, saying we use their assault, we uh, fully automatic weapons on the streets. In fact, he corrected himself in one speech and said, in Newtown, they killed all those children with semi-automatic, I mean, fully automatic guns. Mm -hmm. He knows they're not fully automatic. Well, you know, I mean, speaking of Obama, I mean, on your subtitle here, but Obama wants to take yours, uh, he, as you can imagine, would disagree and say that I don't want to take away your guns. Um, I'm guessing you would say that he wants to take away some guns and, and what, it's sort of a slippery slope argument? Well, if I go back. I, mean, I can't imagine that he actually wants to take away every single gun. Well, his original, when he originally ran for office in 1996 in Illinois, he he filled out this form on a variety of issues. When asked if he would like to have a full um, ban on handguns, he right. said yes. Right. He later came up some cockamamie story about how oh I didn't see Politicians it or whatever. Politicians flip flop. But right. then he didn't. Even four years later, it was expanded that it's just not practical to take away all the handguns. And then he comes out as soon as he's reelected. Bam, he wants to ban rifles. So, and I have this document in my book, it's a Justice Department memo that came out in So in other words, you think like as hard of hearts you would like to see all guns gone. I think you would like to But as a politician, start. obviously he could never get away with that. That's why you didn't hear anything about this in the first term. But if you see this memo I have in my book, that's the Justice Department wrote this year, it says, it goes through all of his agenda items and it's, it, ends with how the only way these things could be effective, every single one that he came up with in January, fully registration and either mandatory buyback, which the government never bought it in the first place, it means you have to give your gun up, mm -hmm. or and it helped the law enforcement to get the guns. So that this is, and the Justice Department won't tell me who they wrote it for, Greg Ridgway is the executive who wrote it, their agency director. Um, he's, it's not, you know, he's not hiding this. He's, this is, I do believe that is his political philosophy. Do you think that uh, somebody like Obama or just gun control advocates in general, and that's a broad umbrella, are they well-intentioned but ill-informed or misguided, or are they not well-intentioned? I mean, in other words, uh, would, would you look at them and say, the heart's in the right place, but they just don't know the facts, or do you think that they are mischievous and deviant and they've got this, uh, you know, axe of grind against the Second Amendment? I mean, how would you sort of characterize I, them? I think Obama is a political animal. And he made, gave a, made a lot of promises to his base, and he's trying to fulfill them. But getting rid of guns would be political suicide, don't you he think? He doesn't have to run for office again. That's why you never heard about it in the first term. Right. So, so you think there's a chance in the second term he's going to try to get rid of all guns? I don't think he has a chance because we have right. Congress, we have yeah. a Second Amendment, obviously. But why is almost the first thing he did in the second term say, I want to, I want to ban assault weapons? Assault weapons are rifles that account for 300 deaths of the 11,000 a year. Why is the president obsessed with this? 300 of 11,000? Why do you never hear him talk about the children who are killed on the streets of Chicago? Or the people, or anyone. You don't hear him talk about the 11,000 who are killed because they're not sympathetic. He goes after the ones that sound sort of sympathetic. All right, we gotta let you go, but uh, before we go, this is this project, this topic, gun control, has been a big focus of yours in the past couple of years. You got a lot of attention for it. Uh, what's next? Like, is there another, you know, because you have your gun, like, is there another kind of topic that you want to focus on of a similar scope and sort of in your in your line of thinking? Well, I'm always gonna be focused on the Constitution and preserving the Constitution. Yeah. And of course, I write for the Washington Times and they don't, you know, I still have my day job, so yeah. I'm still writing about Syria and all these other issues, but. So I'm um, not gonna see like Emily try to get her. Well, there's nothing equivalent. I've tried, I've thought about it, yeah. Marijuana. I don't do drugs, I'm I know, conservative. I'm just saying, well, like it's a way to, you know, expose how hard Emily it, gets I her crack. Know, something like that. <laughs> all right, Emily Miller, the Washington Times. Thanks a lot for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Thank you.